are just one day away from the first GOP primary and second nominating contest in the 2024 presidential race. Our next guest is both host and campaigner in his home state of New Hampshire. I want to welcome Governor Chris Sununu of New Hampshire. He endorsed Nikki Haley's candidacy last month, and he's hit the campaign trail with her ahead of tomorrow's vote. And, uh, Governor, thank you for being here with us. You bet. You bet. It's been exciting. Let's talk a little bit about this. First of all, what do you think Haley's prospects are in your state? Well, look, she's already exceeded expectations, right? So she came in. There are a whole bunch of candidates in the race. Every single one, she is absolutely knocked out. We were hoping to build on the momentum. She had a strong finish in Iowa. We want, uh, the, the real goal is just to keep building on that so she can take more momentum into her home state of South Carolina, where there'll be three or four weeks or something like that between New Hampshire and South Carolina, a state where, as a former governor, she's won. She knows the people. She's had a lot of success there delivering results. So that's really the goal. So we've achieved those goals. She's now the only candidate left other than Donald Trump, giving folks a very clear uh, decision, and in some ways a very easy decision. And now it's about getting out the vote. That's really what this is. We want as many folks to come out and vote as possible. A high voter turnout will definitely help Nikki. Governor, if she loses in your state and then loses in her state, what are the odds that she can stay in this? Well, New Hampshire's never been a must-win state for Nikki Haley. No, no one's ever said that. Uh, she just needs to show a lot of success and momentum and then build on that into South Carolina. Now, that, that's a month away. I mean, we'll see where that goes. She has all the potential in the world to challenge Trump and, and, and beat Trump in her own home state, given all the previous success that she's had there. So right now, we're just focused on the next 48 hours, getting the vote out. Um, she's the only one on the ground connecting with voters. She's doing the retail politics. She's making meaningful connections. She's going to businesses and craft breweries and town halls. And, uh, you know, we we're at the hockey game yesterday meeting hundreds and hundreds of voters. Those things really matter. Trump flies in, does a rally and flies out. He's not doing the retail politics, the retail connection. That's why she's had such, such success here to date. And over, over the next 48 hours, it's just about, again, kind of putting her over the top. Why did you choose Haley over not just DeSantis, but over former President Trump to begin with? Uh, so, look, she, there's a couple of reasons. You just look at her background as a governor, right? Governors get stuff done. They don't make excuses for not building the wall. They don't make excuses for not uh, draining the swamp. Trump does that all day long. Haley, as a governor, knows you, you don't make excuses. You just get stuff done. And as governor, she was incredibly successful. You have the international piece. I don't remember a time when international issues were so at the forefront, probably since the early 90s, uh, of, of uh, America's importance in terms of being strong and uh, bringing world peace, making sure we don't get ourselves into wars. She brings that expertise better than any of them. And at the end of the day, she's just genuine. I mean, she's just genuine. She makes a genuine connection with folks. So she's a strong conservative, but because she's such a, a, a kind of a connected person, she has a, a broad spectrum of appeal uh, to everybody. So that's what you want in a candidate: strong conservative values that then bring the the younger Repu the young Republicans that left the party. We want them back in. Those those Republican suburban moms who in 20 and 22 left the party, she brings them back in. So she makes this party bigger. And she, again, being a, a good retail politician, she has that connection. She had a li little bit of that live free or die thing in her, if you, if you think of it that way. Governor, you, you can uh, make sense forever. And I'm not sure if, if anything really changes. Uh, in, in, in other words, I'm nodding with everything you're saying. I, there's an op-ed piece in, <clears throat> in the journal today, but... Let, it's, oh, there, there is one scenario, and we just had Kyle Bass on it, it saying that in Washington, D.C., it's possible you could get a felony conviction. That could change the landscape uh, for President Trump. He, he didn't think Florida, didn't think New York, uh, but maybe D.C. So that might change things because 31 percent, maybe you don't, maybe it does, maybe it doesn't. Maybe it emboldens uh, the base even more because they think it's so politically motivated. But, you know, we had Tim Scott was going to never vote. Even Ron DeSantis, when it was all said and done, turned around and, uh, you know, finally endorsed the president. If it doesn't work out uh, for Governor Haley, Ambassador Haley, whatever you want to call her, three months from now, will you be working for Donald Trump to get him elected if he's the nominee? <laughs> no, no, look, never. this is going to work out. I've, I've always no, said, I've always does, said. Let's say it doesn't. So, so what would you do? Who would you write Not in? even Who thinking would, there. Joe, I'm not, you, it, for, for, for me, that's, that's a crazy hypothetical so right happen. now because it'll my only happen. focus is, no, it I'm just saying we're not, we're, I'm not thinking never, about that. You will never say I'm supporting the Republican nominee. Those words will never oh, no, come I've, out of I've, your mouth. 
so let's be clear. I've always said I'm gonna, we're going to vote Republican in this thing. There's no okay. question about that. We're supporting the Republican nominee. Let's not be silly. But the only focus now is showing that momentum okay. that Nikki's built, keep, getting okay. her a win here, carrying that to South Carolina. That's the mission. It's tough. I don't know. It's tough for everybody to figure out what to, what to do. And everybody ends up looking like, you know, you used to be saying this. Now here you are. You just And it's weird the way it, it the inevitability of it, no matter how high-minded Anyone, someone tries to be it, you might end up with former President Trump as your nominee, Chris. Yeah, th th Joe, this is New Hampshire politics. Nothing is inevitable. We always <laughs> buck the trend. Watch what happens. Okay.